are listening to the Foamy Heads Podcast, where we discuss craft beer and anything else that accompanies a glass. excited for these beers man burial edition mitch yeah. burial edition thanks for joining us again people who are tuning in i'm terrible at introducing people or us or in general but don't uh, need mitch and rich here man. mitch and rich yeah. here it's just mitch us and, rich on the and right. burial beers burial beers burial surprisingly beers man i'm really excited hey man props to you shout out to you mitch for being able to score some burial beers uh, in Atlanta, Chattanooga or Chattanooga, like that's yeah. weird to me. Like yeah. being able to get burial beers in Tennessee is wild. They must be trying something out with a distributor because uh, <clears throat> for a while now, Chattanooga apparently has had burial on tap at several locations here. Huh. And on top of that, now that I've went to a couple of the liquor stores since moving here, they're just on the shelf cans and whatnot it's not like they're big sellers though it's not their big stouts they're not they're not like the i guess full wardrobe of burial it's just the select few cans that make it here so i'm not sure what we're seeing exactly but well, i'm happy to have in, them yo, yeah hands down um i want to say it was 2020 i think it was prior to covid when burial was testing a distribution plan out here in Tennessee and like Nashville, greater Nashville, Murfreesboro and all that. Cause there were a couple of beer stores in Murfreesboro that got the, the basics surf wax, um, some of their pilsners and porters, like stuff like that. So, and it wasn't, it wasn't any of like their, their highly sought after stuff. It wasn't their, their heavy stouts and stuff like that, but it was here for about a month. And then after that, it just kind of disappeared. And I think the plan was to come back and then they just never did. So I don't, Mm. I don't know if what you, what we're seeing now is kind of like the, the thought out plan after their test and it just took four years to get there or if they're dipping their toes in the water again, or if they're just, You just happen to get lucky, and they've got a very small segment of Tennessee carved out for distribution. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. But you scored a ton of them. Yeah. (laughs) Dude, uh, so the full batch, we're going to review two of them today, but the full batch that came here for me to purchase is a Porter, a Pilsner, and two types of IPAs. Mm -hmm. Um, And today we're going to do the Pilsner and one of the IPAs. Mm-hmm. Cool thing about the IPAs, I think. Let me just double check this other one. They're both heavy resin editions. Mm, okay. Yeah. I didn't know so, that about. I knew that about the uh, the one that we were having tonight, Savages of Ruminating Minds, but I did not know that the other one was a heavy resin. Now, is heavy resin another like a collaboration, or is it just a version that they're doing that has dry hopped and like? more yeah. and more just resin abundance yeah. or whatever it's definitely the latter probably heavy resin due to being like more dank probably due to being either more dry hop or using something like cryo hops or you know something like that to just amp up the dankness of a beer that leaves that sticky cushy flavor in your mouth after you drink an ipa hell yeah wow. <laughs> i heard that <laughs> sounds like you need i'm not a even beer. drinking yet man. <laughs> God damn. um well, should we crack look, it open? Yeah, let's get into the Pilsner. Uh, it's funny that we're talking Pilsners. We've shared some opinions about some Pilsners lately. Um, mm-hmm. But breweries are just popping them out everywhere now. Mm-hmm. Was it a, only a year and a half ago or was it two and a half years ago where I started really digging in to lagers and Pilsners again? I want to say, Mitch, I want to say it was uh, before that because... When um, when Smith and Lentz had kind of opened up back after the pandemic and after everything had shut oh, down, the, yeah, yeah, uh, we had uh, a few buddies had decided we were going to go meet up somewhere else, and you decided to stop by Smith and Lentz, and that's kind of when you started getting into the hoppy pilsners. So I want to say true. it's been 
three, four years. Yeah, they probably had the Pilsner that brought me back into the fold of Pilsners because it was dry hopped. It was their Italian Pilsner uh, Pizza Palace. Yeah, that thing's just delicious. Like Dang you man. would, if you're a hophead and you hate Pilsners, you're gonna like that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just it's night. so good. Yes, uh, yeah. it's almost mandatory for me to pick up some of that when I come into town now because I just like it so much. Mm-hmm. But, um. Barik has a new Pilsner that I'm we're not going to talk about it till you also have a can and then we can get into it. But I have a very against the grain opinion about it compared to the large populace. <laughs> so I want to know if I'm just wrong, you know, plain wrong. But I want to dig into that Barik Pilsner more with their process to see if maybe I should be tasting something that I just think is something else. Mm hmm. But I've poured my Pilsner here. I've got mine too. I am looking. Boy, that's a good looking beer. Be- hey, yeah, shout dude. out to Burial, man. Look at this thing. Yes. Nice foamy head. That's right, man. And it stays too. I mean, look at that. Yeah. It looks like a. Uh, it's that foamy head just stays with it. So you know that flavor's locked in underneath. You've got a nice pour on yours as well, Mitch. Yeah, look at that jiggle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's. That's it's like a little like. pudding. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. That's awesome. So <clears throat> right off the bat, the beer looks inviting. Mm-hmm. Very looks good. Looks great. Smells great. So this is Threads, the um, yes. 4.9% ABV Pilsner from Burial, in with a collaboration of uh, OK Beer Company based out of Hun- Honeyoy, Honeyoy, New York. Whoa. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Yeah. It's a I'm looking small it up. town. It's a small town with like 2,700 people in it. There's nobody to it. <clears throat> Honai. <laughs> no, I don't know. Honoi. Honan. Hon. Oye. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Honey Oi. Honey Oi, New York. Honey Oi. Uh, I, I had to throw it into Google and ask him how to pronounce it so I could get the uh, pronunciation for it. Oh, I was just doing that. <laughs> Yeah. Honey oy. Wow. Yeah. Honey oy. Honey oy. Honey oy. So 4.9% ABV, 37 IBUs, collaboration with OK Beer Company, a five barrel brewery. Um, small place located inside a bowling alley, actually, inside Honey Oy Falls, New York. Um, <clears throat> oh, this also yeah. is a collaboration with Leaf International, by the way. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Burial's Did done. You- Bar- Sorry, I didn't know if you said that or not. Did I miss it? Nope, you did not. I was just that's just oh. something I was I was looking up too. Um uh, Burial's done a lot I of bet. work with Leaf Global Arts anyway. I mean they've been brewing beers to them since like twenty sixteen. So I don't uh, know if this is one of those like collaboration beers they did for him. It kind of seems like it is, but I couldn't find much on it. Well Leaf is a five oh one C, so mm-hmm. I guess the collaboration some of the probably purchases the money yep. goes to it okay yep. so less yep. collaborative but in partnership or for yeah that's the 501c the for it then gotcha. yeah i know 100 percent of the proceeds from threads go to benefit the leaf global arts cool okay let's get in the nose real quick though by the way what's this thing this thing smells i mean this thing smells like a classic pilsner it's it's kind of oh you've already dug into it you already went right in. I tasted the foam earlier. Um, yeah, I, I skipped a skipped a step, but the nose. It's got something extra on there that I can't quite tell you because pilsners don't always have like a nose I enjoy. Mm-hmm. You kind of smell like the yeast, I guess, and it's just kind yeah. of like <clears throat> it can rub you right, it can rub you wrong, depending on your opinion. I think this is kind of the same thing for me. When I smell that, I go, eh, it's not necessarily inviting. When yeah. I smell it, it, you're right. It's got that that weird, like, f- nose profile on the end that makes you go, eh, I don't know. But it's burial, and those guys have, have a very hard time doing anything wrong. So I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I will say, taking the sip, it doesn't taste like it smells. Like, this thing is super clean. 
It's got a little bit of hoppiness to it. Mm-hmm. Dude. A little bit of soapiness, it's, but not too much. Mm. It's I'm, I'm liking the sweet notes to it, though. <clears throat> yeah. To the foam. Fermented um, with experimented thiol maximizing yeast. Whatever the fuck that means. That thing comes back into play. We've had a few beers with that. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Hopped with middle fr middle fr middle fr and motika hops. Motika mm. hops. That's probably where you're getting that sweetness. Yes. Yes. And the and the heavy yeast is probably where you're getting that breadiness too. That explains <clears throat> it all. Precision this... combination of hops, fermentation, and flora provides an insane dosage of. Okay, this is from Untapped. Insane <laughs> dose of Welch's sparkling white grape. Are we getting that out of this? Now that you have it, now you got to take a sip. <laughs> yeah. 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 If you do an right. aggressive taste, yeah. I can taste that it's a white grape juice. Okay. Finger Lake Sweet Riesling, white grape, white raspberry gummies, and lemon frosted granola. Lemon frosted granola. How? Uh, no. But, <laughs> yeah. It, you don't um, need to go that deep. <laughs> you know, <laughs> never go, never go full beer geek. <laughs> but, I do agree. It has a very nice juice, kind of white grapefruit juice or grapefruit. Is that the right? Grape juice. Just grape juice. Mm -hmm. But I don't, it's not sugary. So I don't yeah. want to phrase it like it's as sweet as that juice. It's a, it's a pilsner, but it's got that nice mm, juice it lift. It, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't taste, it doesn't taste like you're, I guess I was wrong. It doesn't, the beginning kind of tasted like a classical Pilsner to me, but the more I drink this, the more I, I steer away from that comment. It's got you, I think you nailed it. It's got juiciness to it. It's mm -hmm. super crushable and easy to drink. Like this is a hot summer day beer. Yeah. And it, it, it would slay my thirst for sure. Uh -huh. Not to steal anything from liquid death thunder, but yeah, <laughs> this is, our that, this is yeah. where it's at. It's yeah, under this is 5%. the thunderstorm on a hot day. This is good. Yeah. This is this is lawn mowing beer right here. Mm -hmm. I love this kind of stuff. And I, I guess hats off to Burial for creating a non wild name for a beer like Threads. Is it's simple? You know, it doesn't get True. much more than that. True. I'm curious why they went with one word on this one as opposed to a paragraph like the other. <clears throat> well, so I mean. You know, and this this could have something to do with the fact that maybe they're trying to carve out a different style naming convention for, you know, beers that they're doing for, um, like when they were for the Leaf Global Arts, like festivals and stuff like that. Maybe reserving their more wild names for like their own beers and like their brewery mm -hmm. collabs, maybe. I don't know. I guess Just so. Thought. You know, the name is okay. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> and at under 5%, 37 IBUs, like, it's crushable. Yeah, this is, you know, a, I'm sad I don't have a four-pack of those, but maybe I can still get some. Well, you had two, but you gave one of them away. So, no, you had, yeah, you had no, two. You got two. I have two. Yeah, yeah. you had a four-pack. <laughs> you yes. had a four-pack, yes. but you split them with me. That's what it was. <laughs> Yeah, dude. This is a good one. Of course, mm -hmm. when I don't think we've had one bad burial yet, though. Which is weird. <clears throat> Shouldn't be that good, but I guess you should be. You should aspire to be. Yeah. And I guess it maybe just depends on what you like, because I mean, their stouts are big, right? They're super heavy. Their IPAs are typically New England style, but they've got some West Coast. Mm -hmm. Um... <clears throat> But I, we did do a, I, we never released it, but we did do a burial recording session um, a, a, probably about a year, year and a half ago. And and yeah. we drank probably three, four different burials. And like, at minimum, <clears throat> one of them was like good. The other ones were yeah. just out of this world. So how it's off the burial. Yeah, every single burial bill, bleh, burial beer. 
Just so good. Just so good. You an English man. You got some hard <laughs> times. Yeah. It's getting harder as I get older. Mm-hmm. And the mind just doesn't want to, for whatever reason. Plus, I mean, once I get into beer, it gets worse. Yeah. <laughs> That's true, man. So I'm I'm, but, I'm I'm digging this one. It's it's a step away from the typical burial that I'm used to. Mm-hmm. You know, this is not one of those. This is not one of those beers that I would see in a store. Honestly, I'd buy it because it's burial. But if I had a choice of a ton of other burial beers, I'd probably overlook this just because it's a pilsner. But I'm digging yeah. this. Just drinking it, I'm digging it. Yeah, it uh. It doesn't taste like if you were to tell me, guess where this beer came from? I would not say burial. Yeah. Just out of experience alone with drinking their typical fare. If it was an IPA or one of those really heavy stouts, I'd be leaning towards them. Mm Mm-hmm. Burial burial beers are definitely, uh, they're unique. They've got their own style and flavor. Um, they're not bearded Irish unique, right? They don't have that, that flavor where you take a sip and you go, Oh, I know exactly where this brewery is from, but I'll taste a, an IPA from burial and I'll go, this is amazing. Yeah. This yeah. is something that burial would make. And you're like, well, as a matter of fact, <laughs> it is a burial. Beer. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Burial. Um, you can always tell bearded Irish, but the one competitor to burial would be, a. I'm trying to think their names because your guys are going to get some at Dark Lord Day coming up. Um, Treehouse. Treehouse. Love those guys. Because their it, their IPAs are just amazing as well. Mm-hmm. So when you have a damn good IPA that's not a bearded <clears throat> iris, you're like, mm-hmm. hey, yeah, could it be? Could it be? I'm here for it too, man. I like the I like the I like the direction that IPAs are heading. Um, I think that it's starting to get crowded, but that's okay with me because I like that mm-hmm. style of beer. I'll drink the same style of beer over and over and over if I like it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, it's definitely getting to the point where you can't tell anymore. You know, there's no. gotta be a differentiator if you're going to continue pumping out beers like that in this space, or you can just keep brewing really good IPAs. But the problem is there's so many good breweries that are doing that now. So you're not going to be oh, able to God. stand out amongst the crowd. Big time. <laughs> it's funny when you go interviewing breweries and stuff, and then you have your IPAs and it, the trend. They always have a couple IPAs or more than two, and you try them. You're like, yeah, I like these too. <laughs> yep. It gets a little frustrating because you don't have a good identifier or a mark of that brewery that led you to drink their IPA. It's not right. as good of a story. Homestyle is special in that regard, and everyone who's had a homestyle will know it. They've they somehow cracked the code on that one, right? It's but beard iris. You just know it right off the bat. So I'm waiting for a flood of bearded bearded iris homestyle and, and imitation, but not imitations. But they're just doing the same process. Yeah, you but, want a brewery to be unique when they make that IPA. You want them to taste like that brewery, right? Yeah, yeah. But I don't think Bearded Iris has really stated what they do, but it's only a matter of time as people move around, I'm sure. But. Yeah, I'm, sh- I'm sure it's a matter of, you know, most of their IPAs are brewed with mosaic home styles and all mosaic <laughs> IPA, but I'm sure a lot of it has to do with their filtration process and the minerals and the water that they use. That um, makes sense. And they probably use certain yeast profiles also that kind of give that that juicy, you know, like thick part in the back of your throat that makes you go, oh, this is bearded iris. And it kind of gives you that little bit of a freshness, clean flavor. I go, ah, this is definitely a bearded iris style beer. Whatever they're doing, they have figured out how to replicate it across their different beers. And I'd like to see other breweries do something like that too, to where you could drink it and go, ah, this must be a burial IPA. Yeah. Right now, I just drink a barrel IPA and go, this is a fucking awesome IPA. <laughs> Never a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. Dude. I guess shall we? the next one then, shall we? Yeah, let's, let's do it. Go. Savages of Ruminating Minds, <laughs> India Pale. <laughs> that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I wasn't expecting the transition. <laughs> That's one beer, Mitch. It's 5%. You're, you're, well, you're shook tonight. 
I was looking at the words and then out of nowhere, I've got the noise cancellation earbuds on. And it was just, <laughs> yeah. Sent, I, I felt the shiver a little bit there. That's right. It's funny. It's just getting back into the emotion of talking and using our actual media board. <laughs> yeah. It's going to get better. So this one, Savages of Ruminating Minds, you picked this one up as well, 7.2% IPA coming in at 50 IBUs. So definitely the opposite ends of the spectrum from this Pilsner that we just finished. Yeah. Dude, I don't know. I'm going to click a media thing here. Yeah. But I'm going to read the description because it's a burial description. I want to hear this. (laughs) I was hoping it was more, yeah, I was hoping it was more of the beginning where it's like, you know, and it echoes in, yeah, but that was right up in our face. (laughs) Sorry. I'm just having fun with the media board now. And that's a song that I clicked on apparently, but okay. Uh, Anyway, burial, this beer, the savages of ruminating minds, or as I said earlier, the savages of ruminating minds. (laughs) As I was Googling it. (laughs) When your demons, where your demons reside, held at the brink of surreality. Fostered by your mind as the paintings of your own truth, a light beam we could not refract. The IPA that helped to define the burial style, usurped by the aura of the heavy resin. Made with wheat notes, were pulled with mosaic incognito and cryo, double dry hopped with mosaic Moteca Idaho 7, and a dose of the mosaic cryo. Ah, so they're using cryo hops in here. We kind of talked about that a little bit when we were talking about the mm. resin edition. Mm-hmm. It's got that probably most using like double dry hopped and using a cryo style hop. I'm excited. This is a, I don't know if it's just a danky beer, then heavy resin is just kind of really cool marketing to add to the spin, but it's got that. I mean, just on the nose, this thing has got that. It's got a super dank smell soapy, which is really weird to say for a beer because normally you're drinking smelling soap and it's not going to taste good, but this thing smells like that. Savages of Ruminating Minds, Heavy Resin Edition, 7.2% ABV, 50 IBU. So this is going to be <clears throat> the, the other end of the spectrum than what we just finished. Mm-hmm. Um, this is getting heavy rankings. This is getting a 4.2 on Untapped and a 93 on Beer Advocate, which is outstanding. Heck yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Do is it, it gonna work? Is it going to do it? No, I guess not. People Apple going, just kind of. What the hell is Mitch doing? Yeah, Apple chooses when and when not to add fireworks. Yeah. Two thumbs up. <laughs> there it <laughs> goes. All right, let's get into this. <laughs> Heavy resin edition, double dry hopped with mosaic motica and Idaho seven, beaming with loads <laughs> of pineapple candy, orange pulp, and blueberry Kush. Okay, so it's a weed. Supposedly. It's definitely got that dank ending to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nose is soapy. The Mm -hmm. foam. Foam is very hoppy. Oh, Oh, yeah? Uh, I haven't had the beer yet, but yeah, the foam. Mm -hmm. I just chewed on it a couple times. I'm like, man, just very bitter. Yeah. Definitely can taste the uh, the pineapple oh. in here. This is nice. Yeah, I I can see why it's like a a lower four, which is really good out of five. But yeah, I think I I like the I like the super heavy resin flavor on the end. Like it's kind of got like that stickiness that that stays with you throughout yeah. the sip, and it kind of and it. It stays on the palate at the end. It's a really good beer. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. 
it's orange definitely color. got yeah it's got a little bit of that too much sweetness for me at the end mm-hmm. for some reason yeah but yeah i would almost prefer, it's right at the end i would almost prefer this being just a little less and with idaho seven hops it's really odd because I've had Idaho 7 hopped IPAs and they've, I've had single hop Idaho 7. That thing is a super bitter hop. Like it is not meant to be for anything but bittering hops. There's no flavor to Idaho 7 mm. hops. It's super bitter. There's no sweetness to it. So I'm trying to figure out where it's coming from. Maybe the Motika hops, which is kind of giving it that fruitiness to it, possibly. Huh. But... I wasn't expecting that sweetness on the end of this. Mm -mm. I like it. It's nice though. Yeah. It almost ruminating minds. It doesn't make it marshmallowy, but I feel like it's got that sweet vanilla without the vanilla flavor. It's just that it's a little kick at the end. Yeah. I'm trying to describe, but you know, I'm definitely getting that, um, <clears throat> I'm definitely getting that pineapple taste to it. That's the that's the sweetness part. I'm getting orange pulp, eh, maybe a little bit from the citrusy, but it's not it's not heavy to me. Mm. But I think that that sweetness from the pineapple on the end is throwing me off a little bit. I can see pineapple. Um, it's hey, not let's like play a fun game. Let's jump over to the burial site real quick. All right, you want you doing it, or you want me to? Uh, sure, I can do it. I'll jump on. Let's see. Here. I've got it pulled up. I just didn't yeah, go know. for it. Go All for right. It. <clears throat> Someone else is currently sharing. We're encountering that issue again. All right. I don't know who's sharing because it's not me. Uh, let me. Yeah, it my it's disabled on my end. Can you yeah, do it? Same here. Nope. Oh, well. All right. Well, we will say our names anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, so we've, let, ta- we've talked go. multiple times about the the wild names that is burial beer and how they come up with them. And I guess you mentioned at the beginning, kind of before we hit record, that they're they're leaning into this now, right? Because I think they realize <laughs> that their names Dude. are wild. Yes. <clears throat> so I've always given them a- shit for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That, that and more so the descriptions. Yeah. You know, the the well, names are wild as is, but the descriptions are just completely insane. How ridiculous would it be to bartend at burial and then people come up reciting the full name of the beer? <laughs> like, oh, take- there's got to be... There's a system, right? There's got to be a system. I, <laughs> they, I don't know. Y'all take the Savages of Ruminating Minds Heavy Resident Edition, please. Oh, where your demons reside? Is that what you're looking for? (laughs) Where you're held at the brink of surreality? (laughs) Sure, man. Um, I think I remember, but I guess you have to have a descriptive name because they have so many on tap Mm -hmm. at a time. But, yeah. the, 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 The names can be two lines long and the descriptions twice that you know mm-hmm. so this one is short for all intent and purposes of burial naming conventions this beer is only four words right <laughs> yeah and that's With true a, I mean, the, uh, longer, yeah. the longer you make a beer name the more creative and the more names you can pump out <laughs> there's definitely breweries that are coming up there are having a hard time coming up with new names for beers because they just they box themselves into short beer names yeah, and but not burial. The, nope. the the encyclopedias and dictionaries are their world's oyster of names. They'll just I feel like they just kind of go here we go, here's the name. Yeah. I don't know, man. I'd... Or they probably just pull up this site and they, oh, they probably just pull up their own site and be like, All right, let's choose somebody for the beers the beer's name that we're gonna come out. Like mine for example. Okay. So let's go yes. through this. I wish I wish we could see the screen, but we can't because there's a bug with Riverside. But uh, it, it's what's your burial beer name? So the first letter of your first name plus your birth month plus the last letter of your last name. So <laughs> for me, first letter of my first name is R. I'm going. Oh Jesus! Auto auto. <laughs> 
fuck. Auto shadas shit. Auto auto sched schedule or shediastic. Auto shediastic. Wretchedness. Like sk- skediastic. Auto skediastic wretchedness along a metaphysical avenue to uncharted enclaves. Uh, uh, auto oh, auto shit. skidiastic <laughs> wretchedness along a metaphysical avenue to uncharted enclaves. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Birth month, last letter. So M M O C. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Acrimonious decre- decrepitude <laughs> inhabited by pale dread. Pretty cool. <laughs> no, yeah. no, 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 you did it wrong. It's the last letter of your last name. Not the first letter ah, of your last name. So oh, you need to be acri- looking at Y down at the end. I do. Okay, acrimonious, <clears throat> decrepitude, appropriated by endless hollow oaths. I'm even longer name now. I'm an even longer name. <laughs> That's like a good IPA. I drink that IPA. Yeah, yeah. man. There's a good chance we already have drank that IPA. <laughs> These are all recycled. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised months. if they were. Yeah. We need a real burial fan to chime in and just mm-hmm. be like, yeah, all these were already taken. <laughs> God. So Engulfed in the, the decaying image. If I do the math right, 12 times, let's see, no, 20, 20 27 letters in the alphabet? 26. 27 letters. 26. 26. 26 letters of the alphabet times 12 months in the year times 26 letters in the alphabet. Mm. You can come up with, it doesn't really seem right, 8,112 different beer names? I think it's because you did letters. Because... You can make True. so many words with 26 <clears throat> yeah. letters. The formula, I think if we were going to figure this formula out, it would take all week because yeah. it's going to get complicated. But there might be a name generator already that we could maybe use. Well, I'm just wondering if we threw this into like chat GPT, we could see how many different potential combinations we could get of beer names. Interesting. There's a really shitty, and I would share this craft beer name generator. <laughs> and it's craftbeergenerator.com slash index.html. <laughs> nice. Going back to 2001. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Uh, trained machine learning generator. So it's being updated. Chocolate home man stout. Yeah. Irons ale, English dark mild ale. This is trained machine learning generator. Uh, but damn, this is a great one right here. Pite moop. Check Pilsner. P I T E M O O P. Pite moop. Two words. You know, every time I. Every time I see something on Google about open AI or something, I get really scared. And then I see things like this and I go, okay, we've got a few more years. Hawk's viewpoint, milk stout. <laughs> <laughs> Kronos Chimera malt, malt liquor. Like malt liquor, really? This is crack beer name generator. What's going on? Yeah. But yeah, that's funny. Ugh. Malt liquor some games. of these burial, some of these burial names though are totally abstracted lesions on a dispatch of maelstrom. For <laughs> that, that seems generated. Uh-huh. I don't think they said that was a good one. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, no, I'm looking at the burial beer name site. Adept, no, I know. Adept bleakness that hounded you and I. <laughs> oh my god! They gotta laugh as they print these off. Mm-hmm. For we shall wander this road to oblivion. <laughs> That's the name of their Triple India Pale Ale. Of course it is. So what should we name this beer? I don't know. Provocative, melancholy, 
laden with incessant weariness. Nah, you know, can. I was thinking more of the clandestine quest of wayward creatures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was I thinking? My bad. That makes more sense. That's yeah, what, what this one tastes like right here. Gosh, every utterance rendered meaningless in these conversations. You could start using these beers just as like a, a fill in the blank. <laughs> Mad libs. Mad libs. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Barrel has become the room 101 nomenclature <laughs> yeah. for beers. <clears throat> Dude, yeah. Room 101 is always talking about some type of hole. Mm hmm. <laughs> Mouth hole. Some type of hole. <laughs> a void. A, I, feel like, a, they, I feel like liquid death is getting there. They're just not there with the crazy, like, long names. That's they true. definitely have unique names and their marketing is kind of similar to burial. <laughs> yeah. But the the names aren't as long. But their their descriptions Don't be scared, it's just water. Like, okay, yeah, I won't be. It's weird. Yeah, Room 101 cigars. I'm sure there's a reason why they do it. But I'm just going to go to their... I'm going to see if I can get to their Instagram. I don't know if I'm logged in. Let's see here. There's got to be one that has been recent that we can uh, showcase. Someone else is currently sharing. Nobody's sharing the screen. No. Okay, whatever. So, Room 101 doesn't do, like, long descriptions of cigars or <clears throat> what the cigar description is, but it's their social media posts that more often than not, or somewhere online, you'll see them go on this ridiculous journey. Um, mm -hmm. Here is one. That has no mouth holes to it yet that I can see. But we are the brand that left our belt at your mama's house last night. They're already talking about your mama's hole. Uh -huh. So, Wranglers of Galactic Flavors and the Good Times. <clears throat> Back alley assailants wielding dead plant logs that deliver delight above and beyond the standard fare. We would like to think our goods are not our goods. They messed up. It's supposed to be our goods. Mm. Our goods are modestly decent. Fill your face with the ga <laughs> gape of our taste. <laughs> gape of There's our the taste. Hole. There it is. What? Fill your face with the gape of our taste. Wow. From the brand unlike any other in the world. That one was five weeks ago. I so feel they, like yeah. I feel like Chad was on vacation, so they just had to like come up with their own description. Like it's it's not what I it's what I expect from Worm One Hundred One, but it seems like they're trying <laughs> a lot harder to be what they normally are. Yeah, and yeah. the guy's name is totally Chad. I'm just guessing, but his name's totally Chad. <laughs> just Don't like Loch Chad's Nessie. Loch Nessie. <laughs> Jesus, dude, just like Loch Nessie. Tall green celestials from space and big natural breasts. These items are harder than the most hardest of hard things you could hardly find to discover. Okay. The fuck? What yeah. the fuck? That's the first paragraph. <laughs> did, did reading that last sentence almost give you an aneurysm? So will the hunt for our most precious unattainables. That's how they tied it in? Yeah, if you could reach into your cell cellular device right now and nab up some of this unobtainium goodness, what would your little dick skinner be reaching for? A stout really? selection held by a dedic Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Like, that one's not very playful. No. <laughs> but of course, so the comments are like, give me all this, though. Holy shit, bro. Is that a toe or a thumb? Either way, new kink unlocked. The first two comments were from the other two brand profiles of Room 101. So, I wouldn't be surprised if the fourth one was affiliated in some way. Yeah. 
but yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's Room 101, and I'm glad Burial doesn't stick to one premise. Yeah. Their naming conventions, circling back to them, definitely do stick to the same like name nomenclature, but yeah, at least they have the good beer to back it up. So true. Props to props to Burial for putting this together. This one, by the way, I you can't compare the two styles of beer. Having a Pilsner versus having an IPA, you can obviously have a preference on which one you like better, but um, <clears throat> I can't say one is better than the other just because they're two different beers. But yeah. I prefer IPAs over Pilsners. This beer is definitely my favorite out of the two tonight. The only deterrence from this IPA is the amount of sweetness as I keep drinking it. It is kind of layering a little bit. I keep tasting more and more in the back of my throat. That kind of sweet mm-hmm. and haze, really. Um, yep. So for it's me, I'm leaning more beer. Pilsner. Leaning more Pilsner, huh? I am. Okay. All right. But that's not surprising, though, because that's typically what yeah. you've been going towards lately. It's weird. Like, triple IPAs don't really get my attention as much as they used to because they're always so sweet. Doubles are still cool. Home style, like, I, or IPAs. I went straight home style. <laughs> this is nice, but it's sweet. Kind of like a double or triple would be because of just mm-hmm. how much hops are in. I guess, um, or the style of hop. That's where I'm a little lost on that brewing process because this amount of sweetness I'm getting here, it does taste like it's heavier than it is. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, it's not. It's not that heavy of a beer. I mean, it's seven point two percent, which is right in the range of your typical New England style IPA. You know, most yeah. a lot of New England style IPAs are kind of are a lot drier than something like this. Um, but then again, I, they they don't. I don't think they push this as a New England style IPA, even though on Untapped it says it is. I think they push this as more of just like an American IPA, but it's got a heavy resin hop to it. So, so <clears throat> it kind of makes sense. When does an IPA become double? It's now my thought because what in terms of like ABV? Well, just when do you want to label it? Label it a double versus a single. Well, or, I mean, sorry, you use... a not not a, not a double yeah. dry hop. What did I say? No, a double, double IPA, IPA versus a regular IPA. IPA. Yeah, I mean it's just simply yeah. when you when you use double the amount of ingredients with the same amount of water. That's basically all a double Shit. IPA is. Yeah. So I mean, you, you know, you that makes a lot of sense. Hops, you double down on the yeast. You double down on the the barley. You make a bigger beer, and as a result, the alcohol is kicked up. But there is no hard and fast rule on what's the minimum starting point for a double IPA. I mean, we have double IPAs that are seven percent, like we're having tonight, and then um, yeah. <clears throat> they have double IPAs that are ten percent and eleven percent, but they're doubles. I can't. But, can't believe I never put those facts together for double and triple. That makes mm-hmm. a lot of sense. Yeah. I always was thinking it might have been like alcohol characteristics, but they all can blend in directions of a ABV. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it just depends on your men maxing. I'm assuming yep. you're not going to get a below 7% triple because you're tripling everything. Correct. But yeah. A double could phase into the same grounds of the 7 mm-hmm. to 8 yeah. category it depends okay. on what your starting ingredients are right whatever you, whatever your starting ingredients are whatever that abv comes up with you know and yeah. you just double the ingredient list but you keep the water the same you know you're going to get a higher abv as a result mm-hmm. but there mm-hmm. is no minimum starting point i mean i'm sure you can make a six percent double ipa i'm sure it could be done if you started out would... with yeah. a four percent or a five percent regular ipa That'd be, if I saw a six point something percent double IPA, I feel like that would be a flex. <clears throat> be hard to make. Yeah. That's It'd be mean. like making a Pilsner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It has to be exact, kind of. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So I'm going What if we, a, that could be a sessionable double IPA. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think. 
I, I definitely think it's a joke. A... <laughs> okay. But see, yeah. you've got my analytical mind going yeah, now, no. so I have a hard time differentiating. I'm over here like... But you get, a, you get yeah, all the people going, no, uh sip. That's exactly what I was doing. <laughs> no. Sessionable. I guess you couldn't market it that way because it'd be not true. Because yeah. sessionable is below five. Or... I don't know if there is a definition, but a sessional IPA is one of it those things work. that you can like, you can just drink multiple beers and be fine. Like Typically, I... they're less than four, but mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Tiny IPAs, as Beard Irish likes to call them. So that's the joke then. It's sessionable double IPA. <laughs> <clears throat> Sure. I, I like this. I like this. <laughs> Foamy Head's bringing you the first sessionable <laughs> double IPA. <laughs> triple. I'll we'll have hop. to think of a fun name. Oh god, triple. Oh, I've got a That'd fun name nuts. right here for it. It is Ooh. the ubiquitous wretchedness <laughs> beyond the culmination of continuation. See how easy that was. It's sessionable. <laughs> it worked that time. That was good. It did. It did. I like it. Um, okay. So, yeah. finishing up, I stand with the IPA on this one. You like the Pilsner on this one. What are you rating each one of these on Untapped? Because that is the that is the yeah. demon that every brewery hates but has to have around here. So, we're so, rating these. I'll do two ratings for each because okay. I'm kind of adjusting the untapped ratings to be more in the favor of the brewer when it comes to success of how much I enjoyed it because the rating system I want to do doesn't help the brewer's case, right? Mm-hmm. The whole, you know, out of five bottle caps. So I would give the IPA a three, seven, five on my personal opinion. But it's a really delicious beer, so it's a four or five. It's very abstract the way I'm rating it, right? But I I don't want the brewer, brewers to think it was a terrible thing from the just a you know the world. I'm sure this one already had high ratings though, from what you told me. Mm-hmm. The Pilsner, I would probably be closer to the mark on rating for both kind of opinions four two five hmm. i'd probably put that as the whole thing i did enjoy the ipa a lot it's got a lot of i don't want to say complexity it's a lot of dank it's a lot of haze hmm. it's delicious my mouth is sweating and i need to drink more kind of thing the sweetness is really the only part i could go i could leave that i wouldn't want that that's it though that's my only complaint the nose is great, tastes good. The looks sweetness, great too. The lack of yeah, it looks really good. If, if the mm-hmm. sweetness were to be dialed back a little bit, you'd give it a higher rating. I would. It'd be four seven five to five. You know, like mm. two marks off from perfect kind of thing. Yeah. So. <clears throat> I'm sitting. So um, I'm actually kind of going in the the same direction that you are, but from like the opposite beer. So. I think the Burial Pilsner collab with OK Brewing um, sits around a 3.5 to 3.75 for me, Um, Mm -hmm. particularly because I have enjoyed the more hoppier style Pilsners. And so the likenesses of Smith and Lentz and and whatnot. So um, just for me personally, uh, I feel like if these guys, and they were trying to make it a hoppy pilsner because they were adding multiple styles of hops into it, I feel like they were holding back a little bit on that. I think they, I'm going to give them a 375 because I, I think that if they were to amp up the hops a little bit more and truly lean into the hoppy style pilsner that they were trying to make, it would have gotten a higher rating. The IPA, on the other hand, is definitely right up my alley. I like that sweetness at the end. Mm-hmm. Um I like the dankness, the resiny that comes with it. Uh, I'm going four or five on that because that's just, it's it's directly my style of beer. To make it better, um, I don't know. I, I, I kind of go with you. Dial back just a tad on the sweetness. Um, 
you could potentially amp up the booziness just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, just make it feel like, you know, a 7% beer. Because it did not drink like a 7% beer. It was thick and it was juicy and it was dank, but there was no booziness to it whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. Which is a good thing. It can be a good it thing, is. you know, but lean into it a little bit. I feel like both of these beers were amazing, but they were both holding back in some aspect of the style that they were trying to achieve. And that's kind of deterring me mm. on my rating a little bit. That's a good critique, man. Yeah. That's really good. So that's what I'm going with. 375 for the Pilsner, 45 for the IPA. Nice. <clears throat> Final ratings. Hell yeah. <laughs> Final but, ratings. But good job, Burial. Killing it. Knocking yeah. it out of the park as usual. Part of me wishes we had that button to lock in our answer. <laughs> <laughs> Was it who wants to oh. be a millionaire or the like final answer? Yeah. Some cheesy sound effect. We'll have to find one. Yeah. We've got but... plenty of them. We just got to figure out how to use them and where to put them in. That's true. Man, I'm glad we didn't do all four beers today. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I was ready, ready to. But, That's right. Um, so no, we'll have two these more. have hit hard. Right. We'll do. We'll do two more. We've got. We've yes. got another session coming up down the pipeline, which we'll have the uh, porter. Right. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. we're doing the. Um, what do they call it? It was the light grinder porter, and then their West Coast style IPA, artistry of absent mindedness, because mm-hmm. of course it was. But <laughs> I'm right. To that one. <laughs> the artistry of absent mindedness. God, every time, every time. All right, man. The burial distribution, man. If we're going to get it in Tennessee, I look very much forward to having them being more distributed in, in Middle Tennessee. They're they're going to take more of my money the second those bottles of stout show up and all their <laughs> other selections. So. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Barry. Yeah. <laughs> Taking our money. Uh, this well, is, this, this has is, been fun, man. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for grabbing those. And if you guys have been following us along at home, hope you guys have been cracking beers all night, too. And uh, I don't know. Mitch, are you empty over there? Did you finish both of them? Oh, yeah. Wow. I did. Okay. Foolishly, but I did. All right. <laughs> well... <clears throat> This has been fun, man. I appreciate it. It's been a good time. Uh, barrel beers are fucking awesome. And um, cheers to everybody listening. Cheers to everybody that will be listening later on once the episode drops. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>